Hi, I'm Carl Kopp, and I want to talk to you about branching within PowerPoint. This powerful feature allows you to go from one slide to another slide and then back to your original slide. Many people who use PowerPoint don't even realize that branching is available. But here, for example, is a question I might ask to a class. What, let's say we're in a medical or training for first aid or we're training for first responders or we're training for you as an office worker or some anyone. What, what to do if you see somebody who looks like they're in distress? Do you check the patient for unresponsiveness, drive the victim to the hospital, or call for assistance? So I can ask the class, which would you do? And they say, oh, let's do A. And I can click on that and branch to check the patient. Then I can return to that slide and I can talk about driving the victim to the hospital. And I can return and talk about call for assistance. Notice those are all going to three different slides, three different branches. And I can have different explanations and different content in each of the branches. And when I'm done, I can actually return to my main home screen. So let's look at how that's done. So it's actually very simple to create branching in PowerPoint. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go into the insert function and we're gonna insert a shape. But let's go ahead and be on this slide and we'll insert a shape. And down here, there's lots of shapes, but we want down here, action buttons. And we're gonna click, there's lots of action buttons that we'll talk about in a moment, but let's click on action button blank. And if we click on action button blank, and we draw a square, notice what will happen. It will bring up a dialog box. And the nice thing about the dialog box is it gives me lots of different choices. The one we're interested in is hyperlink to. So we'll click on that. And then if you click down on the selection, you can see you can hyperlink to the next slide, the previous slide, any slide that you want. And we want to go down to slide. Click on slide. Notice what happens. It brings you a preview of all the slides in your slideshow presentation. So if you're, for example, saying, I can't remember what slide three was, you can click on slide three and see what it is. I can't remember slide two. You can click on that. So it shows you a visual depiction of your slide, which is very nice. So let's check the patient for unresponsiveness. And this is number five, check patient, because I have the title there. That's another way that you can label your slides, just put a title in there and you can see the title. So I'm going to click on OK and this now will take me directly to that slide. So I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to click on this button and boom, it takes me to check patient. Now, unfortunately, right now, if I click on this home page, it takes me to the original home page, which is not what I want. We'll fix that in a little while. Now, also, I may not want this big, bulky blue button to go there, and I don't have to. I can simply format this like any other object. So now I go to format shape, I can go down to fill and I can go no fill and I can go to line and I can go to no line. So now I have no line, that's okay, but I still notice my cursor here, it is an arrow. When it comes over here, it turns into a hand. I click on it and it goes to check patient. Now, one thing I recommend is when you're working, you know, try to get this all together, is to keep some kind of an outline. Otherwise, you can lose track of the button and it gets kind of messy. So now, for example, if I go to insert shapes, maybe I'll do a dialog box and I'll say, okay, um, this is the check patient. So I'm going to go check on the patient. And what I can do is I can actually then move this over here. I will send that to the back. And notice now I've got the button on there. Now I may want to adjust the button by clicking on it. I can make it larger. I can make it take up the whole space. Now remember, if you're using this in front of a classroom, you may want to make it the bigger the better. So uh, you know you may not want to spend a lot of time specifically seeing where you want to click. So now that we have this here, I can click on check on the patient, and I'm at the patient screen. So now I can do a couple of things. One is I'm going to make this invisible because we don't need to see it anymore. And I'm going to make the outline no outline. So there, there you have it. Now, the next thing, uh, when we here check on patient, notice that this goes to 
not the place that we want it to go to, it actually goes to the original. So maybe we want to change that and that's no problem. You just click on the home button and we do edit link and that brings up the dialog box and now we can link to another place. Now I want to link to slide seven because that's kind of what I'm working on now and I click on slide seven and that changes the home button. So now if I am in this situation, I click on check on the patient and I'm at the slide, I click on the home button, then it takes me back to the original page that I was on. So when you go ahead and insert different shapes for the action buttons, you have lots of different actions. So for example, I can go back a slide, this is previous slide, I can go to the next slide, I can go to the first slide, the beginning, the last slide, home, I can actually bring up some information or other items, I can even do uh, a return, I can return right where I was. Lots of different capabilities of these action buttons. And all of them allow you to branch to different locations. So no matter what button you put down, here's the info button, notice it allows me to hyperlink to even a different URL or PowerPoint presentation or file or whatever you'd want to do. But for our purposes, we're really interested in branching. Creating a branching PowerPoint allows you to create a story, interaction, ask learners questions, and then bring them back to a slide that you want or go down a separate path based on the answers and information provided by those in the classroom situation who are responding in real time to your questions, who are choosing in real time a direction to go. I also use it for nonlinear presentations where we branch in different places based on the input from the audience. So I wish you best of luck as you create branching scenarios or branching items in your PowerPoint presentations.